LeBron James, four-time NBA champion, 16-time All-Star, four-time league MVP, and third on the all-time scoring list. That's impressive, but his business resume might be even more jaw-dropping as James owns 14 Blaze Pizza franchises, signed a $1 billion lifetime deal with Nike in 2015, has stakes in Beats Electronics and Premier League champion Liverpool, and owns his own production company, Spring Hill Entertainment. Joining us now is Bill Ryder, who's the NBA insider for CBS Sports and host of CBA Sports Radio's Writer Than You. Great to have you back on the show with us. Let's dive right in. We know that Michael Jordan has been one of the standard uh, kind of bearers of athletes, but particularly as we think about LeBron James and his legacy as he is carving it out and moving this direction, this conversation, and, and driving the more than an athlete movement, what do you think that is what is the legacy that he's looking to drive through all of these endeavors? Yeah, Brad, you said it. Certainly from a sports and NBA perspective, he is a legend. He called himself a king. But in, in a sense, as for, for business, you know, beyond sports fans and beyond sports, LeBron James is executing what's been a very clear plan going back 10 years ago. I can remember sitting in a bar in Cleveland, Ohio, with so many people around LeBron James, and those sources saying that his ultimate goal, sure, to pass Jordan, but the main goal was to become a billionaire entrepreneur. It, it seemed outrageous at the time, but the things you hit on, some of the other things, I mean, he's a massive brand ambassador and gets a big chunk of companies like Blaze Pizza, so they can mention. Spring Hill is his production company that's been very successful. It's really a mover and a shaker here in Hollywood. He's got uninterrupted his media production company. He's got a massive presence with a huge endowment in terms of his nonprofit. He owns a small piece of an English Premier League soccer team. I can go on and on and on. LeBron James has, has very studiously and very strategically used his massive brand and what's been a pretty uncanny business sense and surrounding himself with smart people to quietly, and I guess now not so quietly, build a very impressive business empire that he plans to run when he's done playing. Is this the new standard for athletes, for the major kind of earnings that they are able to amass over a course of years? Some of them, you know, don't have as long a career as LeBron and are not on top for as long as LeBron as well of their respective sports. Uh, but is this still a new standard that athletes are going to strive to get towards? Yeah, you, you said it. LeBron's longevity, 17 years and counting at this level of the NBA certainly helps. It, it is. Uh, Ten years ago, athletes had come to the realization through social media that getting on social media while they were still playing would allow them to have a much more massive social media presence once they weren't playing, didn't have access to all the things that come with being an NFL player, an NBA player. And I think, Brad, in the last five or six years, that realization about, you know, forget having 300,000 or 3 million Twitter followers, we can utilize our connections, our brand, our access to very impressive people in all walks of life, including the business world, to build business opportunities going forward. That is the new normal. Steph Curry, another very impressive NBA player, has his own production company, has had some success in creating some shows. I, I can give you a long list, but to answer your question, yes, those players who have always understood they're interested in business after their playing career, and that's not new. Magic Johnson, very impressive business person after his NBA career. Isaiah Thomas, the Hall of Famer, very impressive business person after his NBA career. Guys are realizing that you don't start after. You get ahead of the game. You have access to people that you need to have access to while you're a celebrity, while you're playing, while you bring, frankly, that um, that fame and that glitz that comes with the game. It, this, is, this is going to be a goal for all those guys out there, NFL, baseball, NBA, who aspire to a life in business when they're done playing. You know, there, there's a lot of changeover taking place, and you've got athletes that understand their contracts now. They know exactly what they want to negotiate, and we're seeing even in Richard Sherman's case where those negotiations can work out and in a big way when you set your own goals and when you understand exactly what you are signing on for, and then additionally, how you want the stories around you to be written, as is the case with the Players' Tribune, of course, too. So on the contract negotiation, side and on the media side are we set for a massive disruption given the attentiveness that athletes are showing right now and the understanding that they're having along the legal processes once they get into their first contracts their second contracts and maybe that third one is the one where they start the negotiations and really take some of the reins back uninterrupted is a great example a trailblazer in 
actually is utilizing their brand to set their own agenda and try to cut out the middleman. Frankly, people like people like like like, uh, like you and I. Yes, and to cite LeBron, to cite LeBron James again, he is represented by an agency that's run by Chris Paul or Rich Paul, excuse me, one of his closest friends. But the reality is that the company LeBron will have a stake in and will run mm-hmm. when he's no longer playing to be a conflict of interest. Now, oh, uh, it's like the entrepreneurs in business. It's like anything else. Those players that are adept at this, that are that are good at this, that are good to understand their contract, taking matters in their own hands, flexing their own representation, being entrepreneurs like LeBron James are going to have a lot of success. But like you know, there are failed business people. There will certainly be athletes who attempt this and, and don't do a good job. It really is situation to situation. But for those athletes, and Steph Curry comes to mind, LeBron James comes to mind, Derek Jeter involved in uninterrupted post-playing career, there, but nonetheless, the vision that he had and he's talked about while he was playing, for those gentlemen who are able to uh, to be good at this, like they're good at sports, and there's a lot of them, yes, I think you're going to see some disruption for teams, for media. What we've already seen, it, seen it in dealing with people who are multifaceted and the leverage that they bring and the levers they can pull beyond being good at putting a ball in a bucket or throwing a, throwing a football into the end zone. Uh, Bill, just while we have you here, I, I do want to hit on one of the news of the day items here, uh, and I hope our production team's okay with this. I uh, just want to get your reaction to the new DraftKings deal, and particularly what it means between Turner Sports and DraftKings uh, to have yet another partnership on the table that showcases to sports viewers the new side that is coming to the forefront, really. Something that's not new to the sports fans, but is now coming into the broadcasts in the lines, the gaming, the prop bets, and everything else that surrounds it. Yeah, this, this is the new normal. And give Adam Silver, I think, the commissioner of the NBA credit, who, who was the head of this, but the NFL is there, too. And there's a team that is in Las Vegas. They've got now. Obviously, the Raiders are there. The fact is that the gambling... And it's um, gambling's always been a part of sports. It has been a major engine for the NFL for a very long time. It was just a dirty little secret that not everybody talked about. And for a variety of reasons, it's out in the open now. Gambling has gone mainstream for better or for worse. It is not just an important facet for sports fans. It's not just an important driver for, for revenue and for interest in sports teams. It is out in the open, and you're going to see you're going to see partnerships. You're going to see things like we saw with DraftKings today. I mean, the Chicago Cubs. When we go back to some kind of normal post this virus we're dealing with, the plan is to be able to bet in Wrigley Field. I mean, this is a totally different landscape as it relates to gambling and sports have always been connected, but there's been a wall between them. There, there's been a, a probably a false sense of shame or embarrassment by people on the sports end that didn't want to be a part of that. It's over. There's too much money on the line, and I think, frankly, the habits of, of consumers in this country and the reality for consumers in this country is that a lot of us, myself included, gamble on games, not something to be embarrassed by. And I think very wisely sports leagues and sports pro- properties, everybody in the business of sports understands you want to be in the business of sports, you better be in the business of gambling because they're interconnected now. Bill Ryder, who's the NBA insider for CBS Sports, joining us today. Bill, we appreciate the time as always.